Hi, thank you for joining me in this class. This is such a fun um, class. I, I can't tell you how much I'm exploring and using teabag art, but in this particular video, we're going to do a six by six teabag art canvas. And these you can um, frame, they're beautifully framed. You can actually also paste them or gel them down into an art journal. Um, or you can mount them and uh, hang them on the wall. They're very versatile. And the object I'm choosing to work with is a dragonfly, but of course you can choose any object you would like to create. And the more, the merrier. So have fun and be sure to share uh, your creation with me in our Facebook page. I love seeing uh, work. And also don't forget that um, I do choose different students to put on exhibit on the website. And a virtual art exhibit is just as legitimate as a real life art exhibit. So don't discount that. All right. See you on the drawing board. Okay, so um, for the first steps, uh, we're going to be doing several things. Um, right now, I'm just going to put these away off to the side. Uh, because... All right, so... Um, we got to get this prepared too. So I'm using just a six by six watercolor paper, 140 pound, acid free, and um, we're just going to take out one of those. I, I'm not uh, going to gesso it or anything of that nature. I'm going to work with it raw. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose what um, tea bag paper. This is just unfolded tea bags dried and unfolded tea bags and i've got several different colorations here because you know not all tea bags are the same and i think i like the darker whoops i've got a fan going because it's really hot and humid today um i think i i think i like these and i'm going to go with the darker the larger one because i want it to span my i want it to span so we have to get this down and dry too before we start to work on it. And tea bags are kind of like tissue paper. You know, they just uh, don't take much to adhere. So I get the area nice and gessoed and then I just smooth it on like that. Okay, I'm just going to go along the edges. Where it's curling up to make sure it stays down. Uh, And then just, it's kind of a dry brush. I'm just going over it to make sure all my air bubbles. Now we're going to set this off to the side and dry. It doesn't take as much drawing time. Okay. Okay, so uh, there are some special um, tools that we're going to be using for our tea bag art. Now, um, of course, we're going to use uh, traditional watercolors. Um, you know, your, your normal palette, whatever it might be, is going to be fine. Um, but I'm going to also be using some special uh, watercolors. Um, now, this first one um, is a, uh, it's, it's by a company called Color Arts. Um, they're iridescent. They're just lovely watercolors. Um, very delicate and... Uh, uh, beautiful. Now, I could not find this particular brand on Amazon.com, but I found an equivalent brand. Um, however, you can go to colorart.com and order them, and that's C O L O U R Art A R T E dot com and uh, get there. This is the morning sun 
rise. I'll put this uh, link also um, in uh, in the class supply so that you have that in case you want to get them. But these are just lovely um, watercolors, very vibrant and different than our normal ones. The other watercolors uh, that I'm going to be using, they're, um, if you choose to get them, they're called Black Diamond and they're pigments, okay? And um, if you choose to get them, you will need to get a carrying case of some type to store them in. Um, or you can mix them up as you want them, but then you're going to be wasting a lot of uh, precious watercolors. So you can see, um, I've got my palette here. All I did was took them and I made, I, I made a name card down in here so I know exactly which one it is. And I'm going to demonstrate right now how to make up some more gold. Um, you use the, uh, I'm using iridescent medium to mix them with. The iridescent gives just an added uh, sheen to, to these, um, these pigments. These are uh, really just beautiful pigments. And they don't paint like watercolors, they just um, add highlight. So you're going to use your palette knife, a small palette knife. And I'm going to go quiet for a minute, but you get out just a small portion of it. I have a tendency to spill things, so I'm going to get a really small portion if I can. And put it into your little container. And then uh, you're just going to add... enough of the um, iridescent medium or whatever medium you want uh, gel you could even put gel in I'm just bringing it up close so you can see how much I'm adding so just enough to kind of cover the top of it and then then you just mix it up you do not have to use this you can use a varnish you can use um, like I said the gel I've never used it with water. I can't imagine mixing them up with water because the water would dry up. But you can see how they get when they sit for a while. And then I just uh, use my aqua pen, my water pen, to work with them again. And they moisten right back up. You can also spray them. But there you have it. And so um, I'm going to be working with, with these and these. Okay, and then also um, some really uh, just black um, needle drawing pins. I'm working with, uh, I pulled out the point three, the point two, uh, a standard, um, what is that, 10, and an 04. And um, I have quite a quite a collection of different uh, size pins. Um, I have these also, uh, um, which all of these I got from Amazon.com. I put these on in the supply list because I found these to be really high quality. Um, and then also I do have some assorted sharpies uh, fine point medium point and then of course the the big the fat uh, sharpie um here's some from artist loft that i've used before they're pretty good too um the problem with mic uh micro pins when you work with them is that if your paint acrylic watercolor whatever it is if it is not dry on your page and you use these you're going to ruin the tip once they're ruined that's it even if it's the first time you can't get the ink out anymore so you have to really make sure that what you're working with is completely dry all right um so that about does it for our supplies and um we'll move forward see ya in a minute okay so Here's our substrate, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, uh, do a dragonfly. Um, so before I actually start painting, I am going to go ahead and take a moment just to kind of uh, draw it on here. So just lightly, so that I have a sense of spacing and how I want things. Okay, 
Uh, and mostly it's for the wings because I want to keep the wings on my uh, tea bag. And I don't want them to fall off. So I think that'll do it. Let's just kind of mm. all right, so now I've got that. So the first thing that um, I'm gonna take my a needle point and I'm going to take the O4, I think, not the tin. I think the tin's gonna be a little too heavy. And just retrace. Um, this will help save the integrity of the, the pin nose if you do this first. And I'm just going to lightly erase my pencil lines. From the tea bag, and we have gel, uh, gelled it, so it makes um, stuff like this, illustrative stuff, pencils, erasing, uh, come off nice and easy. Um, okay, so I'm using a uh, aqua pen. And I'm going to uh, work interchangeably with these uh, two different types of paints, okay? We get it to same so it's moist. And I'm going to start off by giving it some of this. You can see how beautiful this is right away. See how I just put some water in there and then it makes it uh, makes it work a little bit. Uh, it makes it work again. You know, dragonfly wings are so iridescent and they pick up so many different colors. So when you do layers like this with the with the these uh, iridescent uh, paints, whoopsie, um, it really gives it that dragonfly look. You see how it's so it's so shiny. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, so um, uh, well, we know the four is good. Let's take the four.
Okay, now one last thing we can do on this that really looks beautiful is to take a neutral color and, oops, ah, oh, shoot. Well, that can happen. I guess I'm gonna put kind of a, a shadow around this one then. Let's get it on this side. Now when we make a mistake, we just turn it in, right? We turn it into a plus. So this one has a little bit of a shadow underneath it. As we complete this, I hope that you have enjoyed uh, the tea bag art uh, project um, and that you are having fun making all kinds of wonderful tea bag art. With that said, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me, and I look forward to playing with you again. Until next time, have fun creating. Take care. Bye bye.